The Essential Education Projector Range from Hitachi sponsors ICT programs. Coming up in this programme, how a PE teacher is being coached in editing software to freshen up his class's cricket techniques and how a teacher from Camborne is using PDAs and painting software to bring the faces of his Year 8 science class to life. And we've got more top tips. I found when I use the interactive whiteboard, it's easier to use the back of your fingernail to keep control of the things on the board. Hello and welcome to ICT SOS. First today, sport. Well, we might not expect a call for help with ICT from a PE teacher, but Andy Thomas is struggling. He's spending part of his summer coaching cricketing techniques. Lucky man. So what's his problem? I've got a year nine cricket class where we're going to be analysing uh, the bowling action. Um, we've been fortunate enough to take video footage already of the, uh, of the bowling technique and I'd like to be able to find a better way of presenting this. ICT expert Alida Norman knows a lot about digital video and is going to help Andy polish up his clips. Since Andy already uses video in his PE lessons, I'm going to focus on the editing side of things. And once we've edited some clips, I'm going to show him how to import those into presentation software. She's using Movie Maker. The example products used in the programme are just some of the many resources available. For a range of similar products, see the Teachers TV website. A leader is going to use just one of the bowling clips. She starts by showing Andy how to edit it. What I really want to do is um, use this for the, the analysis of movement. Is there any chance like, we could um, sort of slow this down because it's probably a little bit too fast? You can see here that there's a number of effects, including one that says slow down. Right. So if I just click on that, drag it over the top of my clip, it's now doubled in length of time. Obviously there's a, a massive delay from when, when he approaches the stumps obviously because it's slowed down. Is there any chance we could actually cut, cut maybe some of the frames so we don't have to have that much of a delay? Yeah, we can do that. We just have to trim either end. We'll just go back to the beginning, drag that timeline to the point that we'd like to start right. our clip. A leader shows Andy how to add effects such as freeze frames. She saves the edited clips and then imports them into a presentation software package. I mean, what I was thinking within the actual, actual um, presentation is actually to have um, maybe uh, sort of squeeze it up a little bit and then have maybe some bullet points down the side so then maybe I can talk through the actual uh, the analysis of the movement within, within that um, frame. OK, so all I need to do is resize the image then just by dragging on the corner and position it to the place that you're happy with and then it, now we can add a text box. If you could sort of put it maybe along, along the side of the actual clip and then I could maybe have a bullet points down the side um, showing what the key points are to each, to each sort of movement. The first key point would be uh, backwards six. A leader wants to know how Andy might use the edited clips in the lesson itself. Um, what, I was, you know, what I was thinking just from going, going through this now was that maybe I could actually use um, one example and go through it with the class, um, going through the key points, um, talking through like, the, analysis, the analysis of the actual performance. And then once I've done that and they've established what, that, what they're looking for, we could then maybe go and um, look at another, an, another separate clip and then put them into groups and maybe sort of uh, peer assess the actual uh, performance. That sounds excellent. So how confident do you think you feel about doing that? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm mean, really looking forward to actually using it and um, I think I'm quite confident. Great, good luck. Thank you. Andy has built a presentation using just two annotated clips for his class to analyse. With a leader looking on, the lesson begins with the class looking at one example of good bowling technique. All I want you to do is just to watch this clip and I want you to just jot down the key points to bowling. There's your technique. I'll give you two or three minutes now to work in your pairs and decide and come up with some ideas about that technique. OK, off you go. I'll come round and have a chat. OK, so a number of different techniques. What have you come up with? Good. Just come up with the key points, so the, te the technique to it. OK, I'll show you it again, guys, just so you can uh, familiar, familiar yourself with it. I think by showing the clip a few times, that that's really reinforcing the, the concept of analysis and that the children are actually are, are able to pick up different points each time. What about the starting position? 
like Are you sideways on, you front ways on? Sideways. Good to so get that down. Rather than Andy having to click on the the clip each time oh, to show it okay. again to the, so. the students. It'd be nice if that was on a loop, so we might want to bear that in mind for next time. Right, so what have we come up with? Keep your arms straight. Good, you, keep, you need to keep your arms straight. Why do you need to keep your arms straight? So that you can release the ball at the moment you want. Excellent. Sam, give me another key point. Uh, stand sideways on. Sideways on, fantastic. Why, why do I need to stand my sideways on? Uh, so you can put the power into your front foot. Fantastic. Why is it important that we follow through? To put more power behind it. Good, to get more power behind it. The software allows Andy to add text to the clips, like key points about good bowling technique. As we said before, to be able to bowl quicker, OK, we needed to follow through with more, with more uh, to create more pace. Are you ready? For the next task, Andy introduces the second clip for the students to analyse in pairs, building on the key points. So what do you think was good about that? What was good about that, uh, that bowling performance? He, like, he let his arm... Did his arm brush his ear? Yeah. Good, so that's one, isn't it? Play you again. Being able to replay the, the clip when the children have raised a certain point makes it really focused and the fact that it emphasises the point that the students made. Right. Let's have a little uh, evaluation of this bowling performance. He brushed his ear when he was throwing it. Fantastic. Greg is actually brushing his ear when he bowls a ball. Again, watching this. Back foot to front foot. So back foot to front foot. What does that allow him to do? Get more power behind it. Get him. more power into it. He ends the lesson by summarising some of the key points the pupils can use in their next practical session. So, in a model perfected bowling action, what would be the, the best key points? To step into the ball, step into the ball. So step into the ball, what did I say, transfer? Transfer your body weight. Good, fantastic. Andy? Side on. Keep sideways on, well done. Guys, that was a fantastic lesson. All right, you've worked really well. OK, and next lesson, hopefully, we can now put this put this analysis into practice when we t take part in our practical uh, uh, exam. So how did the lesson go? I thought the lesson went really well. Um, the software package really enabled the pupils to sort of focus on what they're trying to learn uh, in terms of the technique, in terms of the key points. I felt that it motivated the children because they were analysing their own performances and I felt that the presentation software allowed for a really focused question and answer discussion. They can now uh, focus on improving through the next lesson um, and by, seeing, by knowing and seeing the key points they can, they can really sort of address these issues. You can find out more information about this or anything else you've seen on the programme by visiting the Teachers TV website. And now for some more top tips. My top tip is in any piece of software, find out what all the icons do. It'll save you a lot of time and help you make best use of the programme. When pupils are creating a document, always try and leave space for a header or a footer where they can put their name. That way you can save an awful lot of time with pupils going to and from the printer. Instead, you can pick them up and give them back to the pupils as they continue working. We all lose computer files. When you look at the view options, experiment with date or with type or name, and usually one of these will help you find that missing file. And finally today, science. We often ask children to collect data, but how can we bring that data to life and make it more interesting and visual? Nigel Bispam wanted to transform the data that his Year 8s were collecting as part of their coursework on energy transfer. And here's what he did. We've got a Year 8 group. They're doing the units on heating and cooling. They know about conduction and convection, but as yet they know nothing about radiation. It's telling them that hot objects give off radiation would be desperate. Yep, and then okay. Letting them find out about it for themselves, it's just great. The class is using infrared sensors plugged into data loggers to feed information into PDAs. The data the pupils collect from their friends' faces will display an instant reading on the PDAs. What I particularly like with using handheld technology is they are not sat on their backsides. The kids are using ICT all the time out of school for their leisure activities and everything else. The last thing I want to do is them to come into school and it to be some kind of ICT vacuum. They're total naturals at using it. They're just dying to use it. It's the way they interact with the world. OK, time out. Back in seats, please. Now the class moves into the main body of the lesson, collecting the data that measures the differences in heat radiated from the nose, the chin and other parts of the face. 
What's important to me is they then do something creative with that data. And I'm going to ask them to use paint to create a false colour thermal image of their face. I'm going to ask them to decide what colour palette to use and then basically go in and edit a template of a picture that I've produced for them. Yeah, so that one could be around there. Those three would be yeah, about there. Think, yeah. If you want your image to make as much sense as possible, you've put quite a cold colour right at the top. You might want to reflect on that. Pupils choose the colours they want to display the data and then take readings of different parts of their friends' faces. The data is illustrated and produces a basic thermal image. All pupils can use it, all primary school pupils can use it, but how, how often do they get a chance, in a, at least a science lesson, to really use that creatively? <laughs> what I'm always looking for is for them to be in control of the technology, for them to be making decisions to make the technology work for them and to do the science and the thinking that they want to portray. Well, we need to get hotter as it gets up there. Um, I do feel like it's like 15. What I want them to realise is, well, as far as the face is concerned, there's bound to be big differences between the cheeks, the temples, forehead, and they're going to have to find ways of showing that fine detail. Possibly they're going to use the spray tool. With all of these things, you never quite know what they're going to do, but that's, that's the exciting thing about it. You've got a rosy chin. <laughs> By the, by the looks of things here, because it, you're certainly hot around your chin yeah. and your cheeks. Just retake it. Shona, your chin is 7.3. Yeah. And your face movement and your cheeks are 8.6. Is definitely your nose the same temperature as your cheeks and face? Probably it's probably not. warmer. <laughs> You reckon you know going to be the pupils could have plugged the data loggers directly into laptops, but using the PDAs gives the lesson a really dynamic feel. And there's lots of different painting software on the market that teachers can use. We've got 15 thermal images of faces around the classroom that they turn these facing towards the middle and we do a sort of marketplace activity where they go around and talk to as many other people and they start looking for similar similarities and differences. That's well different. Your radiation. <laughs> Why is your face like different? Because the window's there, and so one side of it's colder than the other side. Ah, uh, so like if you're like there, and then that's like. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, okay. So my left side is colder than yeah. my right side. As a plenary, I'm going to show them some examples of thermal images of faces off the internet. I'd like them to compare what they've got to those and actually see they've found out the same sort of things for themselves. They've created the similar quality images with similar detail. Um, oh, well, um, our, our faces are usually like quite, like quite warm, like 12 to 14. They're actually quite average, whereas our hands are like quite neutral. What's your hair doing for you? It's what? cooling you down a little bit. You reckon your hair it could be cooling you down? Got to it, um, insulate your heads uh, and keep the heat in. Believe you me, if any of you have the misfortune of losing your hair like me, you'll start to realise just how one, what a wonderful insulator hair is. I'm so pleased that they've saved copies of those because I will be able to bring those up in other lessons. Not least of all, I like to do this, when I do this lesson again in winter, their faces will be very different when they're colder and comparing a whole set of summer faces, the noses for sure will be different and much colder in winter. So it's a lovely resource just to have at the click of a finger and bring it up for start of a, a starter lesson or even a plenary, plenary for another group. Well, that's about it for this programme. But before we go, here's a quick tip from me. Most whiteboards have a video feature which will allow you to record and play back the lesson. Really handy for recapping. Now you can find out more information about anything you've seen in this programme or in the series by visiting the Teachers TV website. And I'll see you next time. Essential education projectors from Hitachi sponsor ICT programs.